Hi Year 5 and Year 6, welcome to today's reading lesson with me, Mr P. Um, sorry about yesterday with the writing, I went a bit uh, awfully, didn't it? Um, today we're trying something new with the reading as well, so it could have gone equally awful today, but it hasn't, it all seems to be working fine, as long as you see this version, so that's good. Um, I thought we'd try something different with the reading, because it wasn't really working last week with me holding my camera up to either a piece of paper or... The, the screen so we're trying this instead which is a bit more technical but uh, it works really well and um, because it's more technical everything moves a little bit quicker so your lesson will be a bit more 20 to 25 minutes rather than 30 plus minutes now so what's going to happen is I'm in this little box over here and everything you need is going to be there I'll move between the questions and the book I will still put the book in the description so you can still have a copy, because that would probably be better. Uh, but if you don't, then you can obviously look at the screen. Um, just careful, though, because it might be a little bit blurry. You should be able to see my arrow moving around now. So keep an eye on that if you want to see what I'm looking at. So the book we're reading today is The Book of Secrets. All right. Now, this is all I'm going to give you today to do your prediction. So moving on there, prediction. I predict that. What do you think this book is going to be about? So have a look at the title, but also have a look at the illustrations. What are the key elements of the illustrations that you can pull evidence from to draw a more um, accurate prediction of this text? OK, what I want you to do is pause there and, you know, keep a notebook. Still keep your working your notebook. You split your page up into, into four, just like I was doing. And see if you can write down your prediction for the book of secrets. OK, so for me, um, I think it's definitely a fiction book, definitely a story. Um, you know, a book of secrets is giving me, you know, magic vibes slightly. Um, you know, hidden texts, you know, ancient spells and all that. Um, the picture is definitely is kind of like old timey um, wagon you know, riding across the country, um, I can see kind of different people. It seems to be some kind of like maybe ox or bull that's pulling it, which is a bit uh, odd. Um, not sure. This seems to be like a mining dwarf or something here, possibly. Could you be a child? I don't know. Um, so I think it's definitely a fantasy book, possibly about this family who maybe discover the Book of Secrets and have to go and... No, probably... That picture is more about journeying, isn't it? So maybe they're on a journey to find the Book of Secrets. So I predict that um, this is a fantasy book about a... Do you think they're a real family? Probably maybe, maybe like a family of misfits. So kind of like lots of different people from different walks of life who don't kind of fit in or kind of come together. I kind of get that from the picture. About a family of misfits who are searching for um, the book of secrets. That's my prediction. Your prediction might be different. I have been correct once today in the year three and four, but I was wrong about the year one and year two one. Doesn't matter, okay? Make sure you've written your prediction down for today's text, okay? So now we've got our prediction. It's probably time to read the book. So if you've got a copy of it somewhere, make sure it's in front of you. Tell you what, I'm going to hide me because you don't need to be looking at me. You need to be looking at the text. We're going to read just a chunk of chapter one. Again, you've been given quite a lot of the chapter, I think the whole thing, but we're just going to read a small extract from chapter one. OK, so chapter one, a quest. Boy rode the black horse to the top of the sand dune and pulled her to a halt. He sat for a moment, gazing down across the vast stretch of desert that lay ahead of him, untold miles leading onwards far for as far as the eye could see. The day was very nearly over, the sun close to setting in a tumble of blood-red clouds on the horizon, and Boy still hadn't found anywhere to make camp for the night. He had ridden hard since first light, stopping only once to snatch a few scraps of food and a mouthful of water. He was well aware that his horse, Bell, was in need of a rest, but he was eager to 
put as many miles between him and his hometown as he could before the day was out. He was not yet far enough away from Seraphin to believe that Master Titus might not come in pursuit. He feared that, pos- he feared that possibility more than anything else that might lurk in the vast unknown desert that lay before him. Master Titus was not a man to be slighted easily, and was sure to be plotting revenge. Boy realised he could not hope to ride for much longer. His main need was to find somewhere to spend the night, if he didn't want Bell to collapse under him. He was just on the point of giving up and admitting that the top of his dune was as good a place as any, when his keen blue eyes picked up something in the middle distance, a thin plume of grey smoke rising into the darkening sky. Boy noticed a couple of dark smudges close to the source of the smoke. He stared intently, letting the shapes come into focus. Two men, he decided, and the bigger smudges a short distance behind them. Horses? He couldn't be sure, but the thought of possible company tempted him onwards. It was many days since he'd passed conversation with anyone. He clicked his heels gently into Belle's flanks and urged her on, over the crest of the dune and down the slope beyond. Belle whinnied in alarm as her front legs sank into the white sand, and for an instant she was in danger of tumbling over. But she managed to right herself, and soon she had reached the bottom of the slope and was toiling forward across more level ground. As they rode, Boy thought back to the stables at Seraphim, where he had lived and worked for the past six years. After the untimely death of his parents when he was still a child, he found himself alone and thrown onto the tender mercies of the people who ruled Seraphim. The town elders had quickly decided that he needed to earn his keep, and he had been apprenticed to Master Titus, the town's stable master, to be taught a useful trade. Titus was a hard man who thought nothing of using his horse whip on anyone who was too slow to follow orders. As a consequence, Boy's back was traced with the lines of old scars that paid testament to this. Of course, he had once had a proper name, the one his parents had given him at birth, but somehow over the years it had fallen into misuse, and he had eventually uh, resorted to the thing that every visitor what? He had eventually resorted to the thing that every visitor to the stables called him, boy. As in, you boy, take this horse and feed him, or boy, bring me that shovel and be quick about it. Or, if he was particularly unlucky, I'm going to beat you boy until you learn better manners. From his earliest days at the stables, boy had nurtured an escape plan. Something he developed over the years. First, he'd encouraged the people he worked with to think that he was stupid. He had never revealed the fact that his father had taught him to read from an early age, or that it was a skill he still practised in secret at every opportunity. Moreover, every single bit of guilt he'd managed to get hold of, he put away in a secret place, planning for the day when he was finally ready to make his bid for freedom. Every night, by the light of an oil lamp, when he knew that all the others were fast asleep, he'd read and reread the one thing that his father had left him, the same book that he now carried in a hidden compartment on his saddle, the Book of Secrets. Okay, that's the, uh, that's the only bit of the extract we're going to read today. Um, hello again. Um, obviously, you can read the rest of that chapter if you like. It's a really, really good book. So we're just going to read that little bit. Okay, so we predicted. Uh, my prediction, not not really right, but never mind. Never mind. So here are the four pieces of vocabulary that we're going to clarify today. We've got eager, we've got pursuit, we've got toiling, and we've got compartment. Okay, let's start with eager. It said he was eager to do something. You might say he was eager to get onto the playground or he was eager to play football. What does eager mean? Pause the video there and write on your piece of paper your definition of eager. So if you're eager to do something, you are keen, 
to do something. You really, really want to do something and you're really excited about it. You know, if you're eager to get onto the playground, you're really keen, you're really excited to get out onto the playground. So eagerness is the keenness to do something, the want to do something. What about the word pursuit? It said that he was worried that Master Titus might be in pursuit. So what does pursuit mean? Pause the video there and write down your definition of pursuit. Okay, so if you are being pursued or you are in pursuit, you are chasing. Yeah, either if you're being pursued, you are being chased, or if you are in pursuit, you are chasing. Okay, and normally it has the connotation of being quite bad, um, but you can be in pursuit of adventure, or you could be in pursuit of your um, your dreams and your ambitions. So in some ways it can be quite good. Normally if someone is pursuing you though, it can be quite dangerous. Okay, so pursuit is chasing. What about toiling? It said that the, the horse was continuing to have to toil and was toiling forwards. What do you think toiling might mean? Pause the video there and write your definition of toiling. Okay, so toiling is like working hard. It's like slogging. It's like putting everything you've got into work. Your work. If you're if you're toiling hard, you're really putting everything into it. You, you, it's normally used to describe physical work. You can mentally toil, and you can be like studying really hard. And it's toiling, but toiling is normally physical work, slogging, and really, really working. So if you had to toil onwards, you had to push onwards. And it was really, really difficult to do so. And then our last one, which hopefully some people will know, it is compartment. Okay, pause the video there, and. Write me your definition of compartment. Okay, so a compartment is like a pouch or a storage unit, isn't it? Um, an area for storage. Yeah, you could have a compartment on a box, like a separate compartment. You can have, you know, it's almost like a pouch, uh, a pouch or a pocket. Okay, it's somewhere where you can store something. So when it says it kept the um, book of secrets. In a compartment on a saddle, it means it's in a pouch or a pocket on the saddle. Okay, so the four pieces of vocabulary we've had a little look at today are eager, pursuit, toiling, and compartment. And now we know what those words mean, you can use them in your writing and hopefully you can identify them when we read other texts. So we have predicted, we have read the text, and we've now clarified. So it's now time to answer the questions. Okay. So again, I'm going to move myself. Actually, I'll stay down here while I'm not blocking questions one and two, and then I'll move up there. So, first of all, it says, find a quote from the text that tells us boy has been riding since the earliest part of the morning. Find a quote. We're not writing in our own words anymore. We need to quote directly from the text. Find a quote from the text that tells us boy has been riding since the earliest part of the morning. Okay, right. Pause the video there. Can you go and do that now for me? Go and find a quote that tells us that boy has been riding since the morning. And then write that quote down. Remember, only quote. Don't write your own words, your own ideas. Just put quote there. Okay. So now you've done that, should we have a go and look in the text? Now, makes sense to start at the beginning. It's an earlier question. So it's probably going to appear earlier on in the text. So, I'm going to start just with this first paragraph, I think. Boy rode the black horse to the top of the sand dune and pulled her to a halt. He sat for a moment, gazing down across the vast stretch of desert that lay ahead of him, untold miles leading onwards as far as the eye could see. The day was very nearly over. Well, that doesn't tell us that he's been riding since the morning. That just tells us that the day is nearly over, so it's not that. The sun close to setting in a tumble of blood, red clouds on the horizon and boy still hadn't found anywhere to make camp for the night. Nope, none of that so far. He had ridden hard since first light, stopping only once to snatch a few scraps of food and a mouthful of water. In that sentence is the quote. Don't read the whole thing, but what's the little bit of that quote that tells us that he's been riding since the earliest part of the morning? It's 
he had ridden hard since first light. I'm going to put that into my answers. What do you think first light means? If the quote is, we use quotation marks, he had ridden hard since first light. That's the quote. Well, first light is just another way of saying the first light of the morning. As soon as the uh, sun comes up in the morning, it casts first light. So that is what it means. He had ridden hard since first light is the quote that tells us he's ridden since the earliest part of the morning. Perfect. Well done if you got that. Next one. There's two parts to this question. One's easy, one's not so easy. First part says, what was the name of boy's horse called? And why was she in danger of tumbling over? So, number one, what was boy's horse called? You might be able to just remember that, but go and double check it anyway. And why was she in danger of tumbling over? Now, that is a quote, in danger of tumbling over. So go and find that quote in the text, and then tell me why was she in danger of tumbling over? Two parts to that question. Off you go, go and have a little try. Don't forget to pause. Okay. So I'll assume you've done that now. So first of all, what was Boy's horse called? Well, I think it was called, I think it was called Bell. But let's just double check. Move me out of the way again. Well, here goes. He was well aware that his horse, Bell. There we go. So I'm going to, actually, I can hold that in my mind, probably. Hold that in my mind. And the next bit was, why was she in danger of tumbling over? So I'm going to skim and scan this page for that quote. Skimming and scanning, skimming and scanning, found it. Here it says she was in danger of tumbling over, but she managed to right herself and soon she'd reached the bottom of the slope. Hmm, that doesn't seem to help me. Let's go back to the beginning of that sentence. Belle whinnied in alarm as her front leg sank into the white sand and for an instant she was in danger of tumbling over. So she was in danger of tumbling over because her feet were sinking, her front feet, we're sinking into the sand. There we go. I'm going to write down both of those answers. So what was the boy's horse called? It was called Belle. And she, uh, well, and her front legs were sinking into, whoops, the daisy, into the sand. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to move myself up here so I'm not in the way. Okay, here we go. A bit of an inference question here. Number three says, what happened to Boy if he didn't follow orders? Use evidence to support your answer. So what would happen to Boy if he didn't follow orders? Use evidence to support your answer. Okay, so pause there. You For two marks here, you need to tell me what happened to him. And then give me a quote that supports that. Okay, off you go. Pause the video there and let's see if you can do that. Ready? Let's go then. Let's go back into the text. It's very, very uh, technological, this, isn't it? Now, I remember this was happening on the third page over here. It was towards the top as well. It was like in this bit. Um... Skimming and scanning. The town elders had quickly decided that he needed to earn his keep and he had been apprenticed to Master Titus, the town stable master, to be taught a useful trade. Titus was a hard man who thought nothing of using his horse whip on anyone who was too slow to follow orders. As a consequence, Boy's back was traced with the lines of old scars that paid testament to this. So, what happened to Boy if he didn't follow orders? Well, Master Titus would use his horse whip and would hit him with the horse whip. And what is a piece of evidence? Well, just the fact that Titus used to do that isn't evidence enough. It's this bit here, isn't it? Boy's back was traced with the lines of old scars. He's got old whip scars on his back. Perfect. So that's both my marks for that question. What happened to Boy if he didn't follow orders? Um... Master Titus would hit him with his horse whip. Um, is it one word, horse whip? Might as well do it properly, mightn't we? Yes, it is one word, horse whip. 
Um, and the quote was, Master Titus would hit him with his horse whip. Full stop. In the text, it says, now, so I don't have to keep jumping back between the text and here, I'm going to paraphrase it. So I'm not going to put quotation marks because I'm putting my own words. It says, boy's back was covered in old scars. Master Titus would hit him with a horse whip. In the text, it says, boy's back was covered in old scars. There we go. Perfect. Two marks. One final question now. Name two things boy did in order to prepare his escape. Two things that boy did in order to prepare his escape. Pause this video, go and write your answer down, two things that he did, and then come back to me. Okay, let's go and find it. Now I know for a fact this happened at the very end. This was the very, very last chunk, wasn't it? Just before the page went over. And I even think it says, it even uses that word, doesn't it? Here it is. From his earliest days at the stables, Boy had nurtured an escape plan, something he developed over the years. So what two things did he do? First, he'd encouraged the people he worked with to think he was stupid. He never revealed the fact that his father had taught him to read from an early age or that it was a skill he still practised in secret every opportunity. Moreover, every single bit of guilt he managed to get hold of, he put away in a secret place planning for the day he would finally he was finally ready to make his bid for freedom. Okay. So gelt didn't appear on our words to clarify today, because it's quite an old-fashioned word. Gelt is money. So name two things he did to prepare his escape. So he um, let people believe uh, he was stupid, which obviously um, helps him because then they're not going to be suspecting that he's going to come up with anything. He also hid the fact that he could read, so he might have that instead. And he collected as much gelt, which we know is money now, um, as he could. Those are two examples of the things he did to prepare himself for his escape. There we go. We've predicted, we've read it, we've clarified the vocab, and now we've answered four questions. Hope you've got all of that written down onto your piece of paper. The last little bit is our summary. Can you summarise your reading today in less than 10 words? So can you summarise everything today? A little bit like when we do hashtags, you kind of summarise it in two or three words. Can you summarise it in less than 10 words? I'm going to have a go, and then I want you to come up with a different one. So um, after awful treatment, boy escapes into the desert. There you go. It's almost like a headline, isn't it? After awful treatment, boy escapes into the desert. There we go. That's my summary in less than 10 words. Can you have a go at writing your own summary in 10 or less words? Um, thank you guys for coming on again for another reading lesson. It's great just to keep these skills going over, ticking over, so that when we return, um, we're all feeling back in the mindset and we'll feel, yes, we know how to do this. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow for your next writing lesson, which I promise will be the full 30 minutes and we're going to smash the next plot point out of the park. See you later, guys. See you on Wednesday. Bye, 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 bye.